Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Got a very interesting question here from Robert, uh, KI6Oscar, um, and he wants to run a 2 meter and or 70 centimeter repeater system. Uh, he's got um, a zero call, so there may be in rural areas, there are still open repeater slots. I currently have two 20-foot masts, approximately 115 feet apart that I use for dipole tethering. Would it be possible to use two UHF or VHF antennas at the top of those 20-foot masts without having to run cavity filters, the so-called cans, um, or would cavity filters still be recommended with 115 feet of distance between the two antennas. Well, I can't tell you for sure because I don't know the specifics, but the whole point of the cans is to separate the input and output frequencies. Now on two meters, the separation between the input frequency and the output frequency is only 600 kilohertz. There is no simple filter that will chop out two signals that are only 600 kilohertz apart in such a way that you can transmit here and receive here. You can't do it with an ordinary filter made of inductors and capacitors. So you have to use what are called cans. These are actually cavity resonators and it takes like four of them to to do a two meter repeater and then from here these go to the same antenna all right so there's one antenna you can transmit on it and then receive pe things coming back from other people uh, without the transmit signal desensing the uh, input to the receiver. Let me talk about that word desense. It's very important. It has nothing to do with airplanes coming down. Okay, desense means to desensitize an FM radio. Remember the way FM works it tends to lock onto the strongest signal. So if you're 115 feet apart and you're transmitting at say 20 watts, repeaters really don't transmit with that much power, and you've got 115 feet in between them, you've got a receiving antenna here that's 600 kilohertz apart from that one. Now this comes down to a radio, and the question is, will this signal here, which is 600 kilohertz different, be strong enough in the repeater's input passband to cause capture of the receiver over here? And the answer is, I don't know. That doesn't seem to me to be far enough apart. Um, you'd have to talk to a repeater expert. I actually looked in the handbook to see if I could find any information about this. There is a section in the handbook, uh, the ARRL handbook, on repeaters. But I couldn't find anything on this particular topic. Now, the problem... You can do all this with one antenna. If you have one antenna and it comes down into these cans and you end up with a transmit line and a receive line, whichever way they go. Okay, and so you can receive a signal, send it through the uh, amplifier and send it out over transmit and they won't interfere with each other because of the incredible ability of these cavity resonators to fix that.
Now, the problem is these are expensive. Okay, they're expensive. Now, uh, that is the normal way a repeater is built. Let's talk about repeaters for a moment. On two meters, the uh, separation frequency is 600 kilohertz. This is in America. On uh, 70 centimeters, the separation frequency is 5 megahertz. You don't need cavity uh, resonators that are nearly as uh, uh, big as the ones you need for the two meters. Uh, you go up to like 23 centimeters, and I think it's multiple megahertz apart, okay, so that it can be very easy to use that same antenna. Now, let's talk about something called coordination. Now, the FCC regulations state that nobody owns a transmitting frequency, period, except they do give a little bit of preference to amateurs who operate repeaters who have coordinated with the local frequency coordinator and received an assigned pair. You need to do that. Uh, even if you're just putting up a, a repeater for your own fun, uh, even if it's just for a few buddies of yours, such repeaters are called closed repeaters because only certain people can use them and you have to um, coordinate those two. If you try to put them in, and I, I have a friend from many 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 years ago I won't give his call sign uh, but it was when I was living in California a million years ago like 45 to 50 years ago. Um, anyway, he put up an uncoordinated repeater and things got a little bit nasty and he ended up losing his license for a while. He since got it back. Um, the thing is that if your repeater is not coordinated and it causes interference to coordinated repeaters, the FCC can and will eventually tell you to get off the air with your repeater. It will be an illegal repeater. So work with your local recognized frequency coordinator. They're not always through the ARRL. And get a frequency pair. Uh, in most metro areas, uh, all the frequencies are taken on two meters and uh, 70 centimeters. They're all taken. Um, even if people who have coordinated pairs have never bothered to uh, put their repeater up, it can take up to three or four years for those frequencies to be forfeited back into the pool. Okay. So now if you're out in the boonies like I am, okay, uh, it'd be fairly easy to get a pair and put up a, a little repeater. Most repeaters are put on high places like on a tower Often, uh, one popular place for them is on top of a municipal water tower. There are lots of those in the Midwest, okay? Not so much out here because we can just put a lake further upstream and get plenty of pressure that way. But repeaters are almost universally up on uh, mountaintops or high on the side of a mountain or something like that to uh, serve a particular area. But you want to coordinate. You want to make sure that your repeater is not going to create a nuisance. It saves a lot of trouble for you and for everybody else if you do that. That is best practice. Putting up an uncoordinated repeater is not best practice and can get you in trouble. And there's no reason to do that. Now, as far as the 115 feet between um, the two, I don't know. You'll have to talk with some repeater owners. That distance sounds a little low to me, okay? And you'd have to do some experiments to see how well that would work. You can always do cross-band um, 
which some people do, they're rare, but you can do a crossband repeater. Uh, 70 centimeters and two meters has somewhat different propagation. So you may be able to hit a repeater with two meters, not with 70 centimeters or vice versa. So there you go. Okay, I've given you all the repeater wisdom that I have. Uh, you would have to play with those antennas and see what kind of a signal you get and whether that uh, causes the receiver to become swamped and dominated by the signal from the transmitter. Okay, you can play with things like using CCTSS, CCSS tones or something like that, but it's the main problem you're going to have is that the output of the transmitter is going to swamp the receiver unless you have those cans in there. Now, let me tell you where you can go. If you get everything coordinated and you end up having to buy parts, and remember that with the repeater, there's more to it than just the transmitter and receiver. There's a controller, repeater controller. Go to Bridgecom, Bridgecom Systems dot com. BridgecomSystems.com. They make repeater coordinators. They'll do a whole package for you. Cans, everything. Plug and play. Okay. Tell them I sent you. All right. So there you have it. If any of you would like to throw a little in the pot to keep this channel thriving, uh, you can go to decastlercom slash support. Also, please click like, subscribe, and tell all your friends about this channel. Uh, if you would like to use these uh, videos in a, a club meeting or as part of a class uh, on a one-time basis, please feel free to do so. Okay, please feel free. Uh, I would prefer that you do it directly off the internet because that way YouTube counts the views and stuff like that. So until we next meet, 73.